Welcome back to the LCS Lounge. I loved that fudge had the audacity just ask Spika, yeah. okay, who's MVP off your team? Uh, and obviously Spika could not say himself, yeah. so he did say perfect. Fudge tried to be he, the instigator. He, he could, could say himself. Yeah. He could, yeah. It was nice though. He he kind of like you know propped up the the Prince MVP narrative. This kind of died uh, recently. However, we are now going to talk about MVPs, and we are going to oh first of all look at the Pog leaderboard. Pog Where leaderboard. Inspired is actually up there yep. with six player of the game. That's why people were so hot on him in the first yeah. round robin. He was Man. popping off. Uh, definitely came back down to earth a little bit. Inspired's been quiet, I think, uh, yeah. in people's minds, because it's probably pretty consistent throughout the split he was yes. picking them up. He is still, like, I can't wait to go back and look at, like, all of the early pathing from these junglers, because jungler all pro is also something that's, like, really, really close to me. Uh, Inspired, I feel like every really good game that EG have, you can see how he is the driving force behind yes. a lot of good stuff yeah. that happens. But for those of you yeah. who don't know, player of the game leaderboard, actually, each player of the game counts equivalent to one first place vote, which is three points, and about 40 people get MVP votes. Casters, analysts, one coach representative from every LCS team, one player representative from every LCS team, and a number of third party media, so it's usually about 40. So they're not insignificant, those, those player of the game awards. True. Yeah. At the beginning of the year, we did this thing where we each acted as a uh, player in a roulette wheel. Apparently I am up first, and I'm gonna state my case as MVP of the league. For someone who, random. Who do I got? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Roll the wheel. Oh, wait. what? Oh, wait. Yeah, what? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, oh. all right. I'm um, Prince. Guys, I know you've been a little out on me lately. My team hasn't looked as dominant as we did previously. However, we still have an insane record. I just got a pentakill. Yes, I know it was on Zeri, so you might dock me for that too. Uh, but honestly, my stats are insane. I am an incredible team fighter and I've soaked up so much pressure that some other bot laners haven't had to deal with. Still have great numbers. I should be your MVP. He did get the pentacle. He also played with two supports. Yeah. yeah. You know play. what? I'm not going to be a prisoner of the moment <laughs> with That's who exactly. I get. Are you sure about that? <laughs> we'll see. It depends on the moment. What if you get contracts? You can get both. Yeah, He's geared yeah. in. Oh, nice. Oh, what do you know? Oh, wow. Uh, I've already won this award twice, and I've had to play in a meta that isn't even suited for me, but still lead my team to a tie for first. I've also played with two different mid laners across a very short split. When people say jungle mid synergy, how was I seven and two with both? Because I am the most valuable player. My mid laner may seem like it matters, but it doesn't. I've won an MVP with Perks, I've won an MVP with Niski, and I'm gonna win an MVP with MS and Diplex. With both? <laughs> yeah, yep, both. Counts, is that counts four. four. Yeah. If four people has won the MVP with, wow. Yeah, well, all, right. all right, I'm up next. Let's see who I get here. With your grandpa sweater? I don't know, it's like a vomit sweater. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Fudge, okay, I love this one for me. Uh, yeah, it's still Mark. I am the best top laner in the league, hands down. There's not even anyone close to me in the same ballpark. I uh, talk about consistency, you talk about the mid laners changing out. I was also a consistent factor for C9. I, as you can see in the player of the game leaderboards, the only top laner up there. No one else is even close. It's an 80 carry meta. You saw three 80 carries up there, but I was the only top laner consistently outperforming my opponent, as well as the fact that in the later game portion of the season, I had to start playing Scion and Cho'Gath left and right because tanks became meta on the top side, but I'm still incredibly proficient. I have the highest kill participation of any top laner in the LCS. I'm, oh, it's gone. Time's up. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. All right, that's respectful. That's yeah, good. That's yeah, I, uh, let's go. Uh, thank God. I'm kind of oh. convinced. <laughs> You're stunned by how good I was. I know. All right. Yeah, I know. I was like, All right, oh, guys. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh! Guys, I must start this discussion by saying that I am impressed. I'm on a team that have too many great individuals. Blabber, just a moment ago, was talking about how great he is. I have Fudge, who was talking about how great he is. It's an 80 carry meta, and I have been the most consistent player on this team and in the league. Prince, who was just coming out earlier talking about how good he was, where were you in the past two weeks? I was here. I was performing on every AD carry, including when my own support was playing AD carries. I think it's disgusting. <laughs> You're off. You think it's yeah, that now we have to listen to Flowers and Kobe. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
this is for you, Rad. We have something Slurred to out. settle now. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. It's time for game number three. So here's the chaos update on what this one looks like. If EG wins, they lock third for themselves. Nobody else can tie break them for it. They're there. If they lose, if Team Liquid can upset them, then that means that there's still the possibility of that four-way tiebreaker for third through sixth. And it also means that EG will, at minimum, have to play a tiebreaker with CLG, who are at 10 wins as well. Yeah, there's so many questions in my mind surrounding, you know, EG, a lot of the players getting sick, and how much of that is is contributing to the performances that they've had, plus right. the, the individual performances dropping. And all of the teams coming into this, we're talking about how EG, they're probably the second best team in the entire league with how they're performing in scrims. Uh, but then now playing from home, uh, having to overcome a lot of obstacles, see if they can get over the final hurdle here because this is an important one as you're illustrating. Bring it together just when they need it. The last day of the split, take down Team Liquid. There's that Gragas that Fudge was talking about. So many teams loving how flexible it is, but even evil geniuses will bypass that as the first pick. Picking up the Jace, JoJo had one of the very, very high DPM Jace games. So yes, far yes, 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 No, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yes, it's yes, not yes, happening. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, You know what? I'll take the hover as like, yeah. a, a shout out. I go. accept that. I accept that. Thank you, Summit. Thank you, Base Team Liquid. And we do have the Jace locked in for EG. The Lee Sin, the first lock in for TL. Remember, the game that they absolutely terrorized and dismantled FlyQuest, it was off the back of Pioshik's early game Lee Sin play. I feel like this is what they gotta wanna be running back. Talon recently got some buffs, so I feel like that's what they're just hovering, trying to tease us a little bit, yeah. but I don't buy it. Uh, the Jinx, however, I do buy that. It's locked in for y'all. You know what's going through my mind when they're hovering this, this Skarner is Skarner rework, AOE ultimates. That is gonna be. I don't. Okay, it's, we'll talk about that later. If when that, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm about that, to educate you. When that, it's, when, it's when that becomes, yeah, when that becomes reality. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. Well, let's focus on what we do got here in the draft right now. Remember, it's Kindred, Rakan, Thresh, Annie, Elise, and Varus all banned out. The Aphelios locked in. He can't have his buddy in Thresh. Normally, that's one of his best friends. So I'm curious what they're gonna pair with him here in the bottom lane. Yeah, same. Both of the, both of these AD carries work off of. Uh, you know, defensive supports trying to supplement, uh, you know, and try and build over some of these defensive holes that they have. But they can also go with stuff like Renata. If you pick too much engage and a big, uh, you know, AOE of melee champions, then Renata is really good for counter engage uh, and can actually lane pretty well with both of those. There's the Gragas, which finally does make its way in here, though. Powerful flex, Getting powerful flex back in. And, and of course, you always want to balance AP plus AD with jungle and solo laners. I'm assuming this Gragas uh, has a higher percentage chance to go into some days hand, or Inspired's hands than some days, but it is still definitely flexible here. So might even be able to draw some top lane mess. Whoa, he has okay. Tom Kench a long time. So you know those, those defensive holes that I was talking about, uh, trying to build around here, Tom Kench, the classic for these AD carries that do not have dashes. Team Liquid grab theirs here for Jinx to protect it. Reminder that Team Liquid is officially eliminated from playoff contention already. Yeah. So what they're doing here is potentially throwing us into the most chaotic tiebreaker scenario possible if they can beat EG, but they will not be able to earn themselves a spot in playoffs. And it is Core JJ, Tom Kench, one of his famous champions, had some extremely, extremely support carry oriented games, even when he was on net. Bands coming through though for the top lane cover here for Team Liquid, trying to deal with the possibility of the flex for Gragas, as well as taking away some of these enchanters, defensive possibilities for bottom side for Aphelios. Yep. Whenever I see Tom Kench, I always want to see, you know, like a pike uh, answer to it, to try and execute through his gray health shield. Yeah. Try and pull him in because you can get so much value, but we just don't have a lot of pike players in the LCS, you know? Not a, not a lot willing to go that deep into the into the extremes for just like support, support on support counter. Handsome Squidward in the audience here as we've got the Ari and LeBlanc banned out by EG targeting Harry specifically in the second half of the draft. The Rise locked in for TL. All right, some roaming possibilities here for Harry from mid lane. 
and with Lee Sin. This is a very deadly duo. People always talk about Lee Sin plus LeBlanc, but Lee Sin plus Rise also very, very good at mid-jungle 2v2s, especially when Jace is trying to play super aggressive, and you know JoJo is always turbo aggressive. Yes. Let's see if they actually want to lock in this long hover on Soraka. Yeah, that'll be it. All right, so bottom lane duo is Aphelio Soraka versus Jinx Tom Kench. That is a lot of poke damage. The Aphelios plus Soraka here, a lot of damage. We'll see the state of Tom Kench, how much uh, headway they can actually work through on that health bar, plus uh, all the defensive buffs for melee champions off your defensive support item. Uh, and all the potions is going to be chugging through, see if they can actually work through bottom side priority here. But if they lock in, okay. Nope. All right. So it's not going to be the blind Renekton. Is going to be the Cassante up on top side. Fudge well, was mentioning his two favorite counters into it. The Fiora for a little bit more lane. The Gwen for a little bit more scaling. Both are still up. Both are available. The Jax is also still up. Summit's classic Gnar pick is also still available. The Jace, of course, another Summit special, but that one's already been taken away, so Summit's on Fiora versus Cassante. Yeah, and I definitely would prefer this over one of the AP options like the Gwen because you already have Ryze. Uh, I would really prefer Ryze to remain solo AP on this team okay? so they can try and focus uh, focus on that lane, get some ganks off on Jace, get that Ryze roaming to the side lanes here. And if Summit's going to have a strong early lane, which lane phase, Summit is still putting up big numbers. Yeah. As much as... It is super easy to sling insults at him getting caught by junglers later on in the mid game for him and for Team Liquid. His lane phase numbers still popping. So with this Fiora, should have advantage up on top side. We'll see about Lee Sin trying to link up with, uh, with mid lane in the early stages of the game. And bottom side here, Tom Kench, the Tom Kench punching bag, basically. How much health can Sorak and Aphelios work through? So I'm... I'm cool with the Tom Kench for Core JJ because a lot of the times, so many people that are fans of LCS, they watch these games from Team Liquid, and whenever Core JJ is on an Enchanter, it's just like, oh, come on, put him on something with a go button. Let this guy decide when the fight is. I'm among that camp of people. I always want to see Core JJ have the ability to decide when they fight. And Tom Kench is one of those rare champions that can engage while also still playing protection duty for his AD. And you better be sure when Core JJ plays Tom Kench, that is what he does. He looks for kills with this champion. These best games that I'm talking about where he runs the game for Team Liquid on Tom Kench, they're ganking bottom lane, they're pushing out. He's invading enemy jungler. He's one of those annoying supports that comes into your jungle, gets vision on your camps, even attacks you at your camps. And I've got a bonus on top flowers. He's also running Ignite Tom Kench, Flash Ignite Tom Kench for bottom side to look for these kills onto the Soraka, that Ignite for the healing cut. Uh, so they can actually really embrace that style. I like that a lot versus a Soraka lane. Bringing the Grievous Wounds in your summoner spell, making it so you don't have to change your build to pick up early heal cut and guarantee that the all-ins can still remain effective. The pause is very short. We are getting back into the game right now. Not even sure what it was about, but it doesn't matter because it's in the rearview mirror. Let's see how it goes. EG fighting for an uncontested third place spot. Team Liquid fighting to spoil that and throw the remainder of the day into some potential calamity. Keep your eyes on Tom Kench. Keep your eyes on Core JJ throughout this game. That's who I'm watching to get things rolling for Team Liquid. Pioshik's Lee Sin right next to him. Especially since Core JJ has also started with an early sweeper here. So the possibility for an extra invade. Both heading down towards bottom to get brush pressure though. FBI hanging out in that tri brush, just making sure nobody's doing any strange invades here. Core JJ does have bush control in the lane itself. You can see the five point spread from EG. They know that they're the ones who still have something to really fight for here in this game. They don't want to have any sort of cheeky level one screw up what they're trying to plan here. They're not trying to go for anything wild and crazy just yet. So everything's fine for now. Inspired having the electrocute on the Gragas as well for the extra burst and everything early. Mm. I want to see this guy get some good ganks as well. JoJo on the Jace. This is something that I think EG just has to be so careful with because it is JoJo who's been struggling a lot recently. Now he's going to take more damage from the Vitals. JoJo had to flash already. He's dead. Minions collide and he's dead. JoJo not the start he wanted. I think that he thought he might be okay getting away with just the phase rush first there. And so that's why he didn't flash the wall immediately. 
because I was about to shout out, hey, flash this wall right now. Mm -hmm. This moment that comes up right here, I was thinking, get out of there. This guy's got ghosts. Summit popped it really early, but you see that phase rush. It looks like EG were making the call, hey, I'm going to run it out with, with that beast, uh, you know, that boost of speed, but that's not going to be the case. You know, they take too long. They don't immediately flash out of there. And Harry says, I'll flash this wall. If you're yeah. not going to use it to escape, I'll use it to kill you. Harry gets over and this is not it as early as I was thinking, hey, let's gank mid and get the rise fed flower so he can roam yeah, the other man. side of the lanes. But I'll take it if that's Team Liquid. First blood already on the rise. This just greatly accelerates that, that game plan I was talking about from draft phase for Team Liquid. So this is really, really, really big stuff for the start. And already you see Inspired coming over on Gragas. He crosses through, doesn't want to waste too much time in the look towards mid. He could see from Harry's movement. Yeah, they still have the wards left around on this top side. So he just passes over towards his red quadrant to continue on the clear. And since he passed through vision, Pioshit comes over to contest red. We'll see what happens with that potential conflict at the red buff. But I do want to, oh, Inspired's taking the long way around just to see if Pioshik starts up the red. Inspired's well, you know, you know when you give vision by going through mid that the enemy jungler has a high possibility of doing this. So Inspired knows what information he's giving over willingly to the enemy. And so he's playing cautiously, playing accordingly. Trying to get the earlier respawn on his Krugs as well. Another benefit from going there. Instead of red, he'll find, hey, yep, Pioshik took that opportunity when I showed through, coming through mid, takes my red. Fair play, that's the price. Yeah, that's jungling, man. That's the name of the game. But I do want to talk a little bit about JoJo because he has been feeling under the weather in the past couple of weeks. Like, Damn. obviously, <laughs> he's been kind of sick. He's not playing at 100%. But even despite that, throughout this split, I think he's had a lot of mistakes. He's put himself in positions where he can be caught out of position, where he can be punished, where he can end up giving away some of these leads. And it was just yesterday that we saw EG had a decent spot in the game. They were doing pretty well, but JoJo getting caught out on the Vagar three times in a row, two to big barrels from Tenacity, one from just getting caught out in the bottom lane when he was pushing, it created an opportunity for their opponents to get back in the game. And so really, what I want to see from JoJo here with this third place lock on the line is the removal of some of those pretty easy mistakes. Yeah, definitely agree. Man, Tenacity was nailing him with those Gragas ultimates. Absolutely on point. His job has made it a little bit more difficult difficult of course because he had to blow his flash early as well as giving the first blood money over to harry so that kind of sets another obstacle in his path meanwhile top side someday wants to crash this wave he's trying to crash the wave oh sonic wave misses and they're not going to use the ward to jump in and try to go for the tempest cripple like that so the wave just gets to crash summit will farm it up and someday goes home perfect for him goal accomplished for someday even with piosha kind of hovering around his bottom side camps are up as well, so Pioshik doesn't want to waste much time. You got to recall, get back down there. Gromp and, and Wolves already are respawned, and Core JJ is trying to scout out and control this river. Big, big, important gank route here for Team Liquid. The highway between mid lane and bottom lane is that entrance for Tom Kench. See if, Cor if Vulcan can actually protect his control ward. Doesn't look like he can. Vulcan staying aggressive here, finding a little bit of poke onto Jan. They lose the bone plating on the Soraka. Really good uh, preemptive work done by Core JJ to open up this bottom triangle of the map for, for some Pioshik ganks. You know, Leeson with Flash, with a ward charge right now. Definitely a very dangerous member. And I love the setup from the support. Inspired goes in quickly though. Doesn't want to leave this area of the map dark. This is one of the most heavily fought over parts of the map early game, regardless of comps, Pioshik ward hops into control ward. Yeah, the control ward, seeing that ward drop over the wall means JoJo is able to get back before Team Liquid has the opportunity to engage. If JoJo doesn't immediately fall back there and he's not aware of what's going on, there could have been a flash rune prison from the rise. Remember that JoJo's flash is still not quite back up. That's the timing Team Liquid was looking for. Someday, oh. knock Summit under the turret. Solo kill in the top lane. Oh, no, you. You don't. He didn't even have to use his own ultimate there from Cassante. Someday just absolutely embarrasses Summit. Flowers, I feel bad from Champ Select. We were trying to hype up 
at least Stummit still has his, his solo lane numbers. Not no more. And he had been racking up that CS lead. He had been doing a great job with his Fiora. He had built up, look at this, like a triple stacked wave he's got built up on Sunday. But level five Cassante. oh my gosh, he dashes behind the repost, pushes him into two tower shots. And with that giant triple stacked wave takes him down. I'm sorry, I try to be understanding in most situations, but Cassante has been doing this all split. You go near the turret and he shoves you back and he shoves you back and he shoves you back and you die. Come on, man, where's the awareness? Yeah. Come on, Summit. Well, Pioshik's invading Inspire now. He's got Harry behind him. The mid lane control allows Team Liquid to rotate their mid laner over, and that means that they've got control over the jungle. Pioshik's gonna force Inspired out, steal away this blue. That's gonna be two out of three of Inspired's first buffs going over to Pioshik's Lee Sin, invading. Yeah, he's eating up good. Level six advantage, too. Guess what, Gragas? You don't even get to play now. Lee Sin with level six advantage is definitely a fight you do not want to take. Pioshik going to skip Gromp to get here right when Rift Herald spawns. I actually like this, not showing any greed at all because this, it takes so long to take Rift Herald. If your enemy jungle recalls and then runs right back there, he will get there in time as you're about to finish it. So Pioshik doesn't waste any seconds on Gromp. He goes immediately over to it. Inspired still running their beeline from the recall. So that timing I'm talking about is gonna be there very close. Well, Pioshik on the Herald, brings it low, but he can't get it in time. He oh. does secure it, but he can't pick up the eyeball. So Pioshik gets the money, but the actual objective remains on the ground. Someday playing bodyguard, so nobody from TL can pick it up. Yeah, that has happened to me so many times in solo queue. You force the enemy jungle to recall, and you immediately start your rift field, and it's basically a race right then. They come back straight from base, get there just in time to try and smite fight, but Pioshik, quick hands, gets it. Harry in trouble. The silence from the Soraka keeps him from casting some spells. He gets taken low, but he's not in danger of any sort of lethal damage just yet. Look at this wraparound from Pioshik, too. He wants to correct on topside. Someday's got to feel pretty aggressive right now after the solo kill. So Pioshik trying to play on it and see if someday gets a little fancy. Well, Summit is trying to bait him into a fight here. Lunge hits the minion. Vital in a good spot for Summit, but with Pioshik going back and Someday having a level advantage, okay, now maybe Summit wants to fight a little more. I love this from Someday, though. He's, he's got a cool head about him. He's not playing overly aggressive. He recognizes that earlier solo kill for what it is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, you, you, gave me a, you gave me a freebie with some, uh, some bad positioning. I took advantage. Doesn't mean I'm going to lose my head about it. And bottom side, EG off of their bottom push. Good job here, they get the wave in, they rotate over to Dragon, mid lane pushed out, bottom lane pushed out, objective secured, that's by the book for evil geniuses. This is what they want. Try and start stacking these dragons, try and chip away at the gold lead that Team Liquid have been able to build here so early. Still about a 1K lead for TL, 10 minutes into the game. I'm gonna call the neutral objective score one to one half just because they did get the money from the Herald, but not being able okay. to pick up the eye hurts a little bit. So EG, a little ahead in terms of the neutral game. And yeah, what you're talking about in the top lane, Summit gets the solo, or Summit gets solo killed. Yeah, that's bad. But even when we had Fudge on last game and he was talking about the Fiora and Gwen matchups, he said, yeah, Fiora's tougher in lane for Cassante for sure, but Gwen can do more stuff later on in the team fights. So you don't expect Summit to just all of a sudden be number one solo killer top laner for the rest of the match after getting that first advantage, but it feels really good for him. Building towards the Iceborne Gauntlet as well, a much beloved item of Kisante, not used in a whole lot of other champions in the game, as Pioshik's gonna find Inspired here in the jungle. Q1, Q2, the kick. Inspired creating some distance there with his own ulti. Pioshik forces him low, will not get a flash, however. Interesting. Ultimate trade, but he gets the better of the health trade as well, so he's going to be positive wolf steel. He uses his smite. But now, Inspired's got a buddy. You might have an HP lead, but if you don't have a friend lead, you still got to be careful if you're invading the enemy jungle. So Team Liquid's going to back away from that one, just stealing away the wolves, winning out in the health fight like you talked about. Down here in bottom lane, 107 to 104, as the minions are equalized. So Yawn with 
a very, very, very slight lead. Both of these guys on hyper-scaling AD carries. We haven't got to see the all-in from Core JJ, the Ignite, threaten any sort of kill just yet. Inspired is down on this part of the map, but that Krug camp is warded, so Team Liquid is aware of the positioning of the EG jungle. Ooh, love it. Vulcan here silences Core JJ's attempt. <laughs> to go and get that initiation you're talking about. No W for you, sir. Very easy silence for Vulcan. Very sad B for Core JJ. Recall's getting off on the reset here. Bottom side, as you said, they are watching Inspired. They know this Gragas going back to base as well after the full reset. And a Gragas with Flash is a Gragas ready to make some plays. Yes, sir. Maybe now. Ah, oh, man. Well, JoJo wasn't even uh, able to complete his uh, Eclipse either. So maybe JoJo try to quick shove, complete his Mythic here, complete his Eclipse, and, and then have some fighting for him here to go after Harry, because pretty early Rod of Ages for Harry, plus the tier because of the first blood. Summit and Someday just continuing to go back and forth up here a little bit. Pioshik is over the wall trying to clear out the control ward, but they're going to jump on him. The burst comes out. Pioshik disengaging with the kick. He has his own flash. He wanted to save it if he could, but there was no way. He would have died. Had to flash back over the wall there as EG force out a critical summoner from the TL jungler. And look at Core JJ. Another deep roam on the Tom Kench, replenishing the deep vision on that red quadrant of the jungle before it even expired. Yeah. Core JJ is keeping this bottom jungle of evil geniuses lit up like a bright light. Meanwhile, top side, Summit's gonna have to give some ground and someday gonna get another turret late. Yeah, that's the goal there for Inspired. He walks up, he couldn't get the gank because of the ward. Now FBI versus Core. Core is incredibly low here. Pops the thick skin before spitting him out. Core does not want to trade one for one and Harry guarantees he won't. That's that Core JJ Tom Kench Flowers. Sets it up himself. He's just stacking up his acquired taste as Harry comes down for the ulti. Ooh, nice repost on the ulti from Summit, but it's not enough. He started off too low on health and it meant that someday an Inspired could burst him down and take another point. And so, the push on plate on top side here, I think more than equalized by Yon getting free fire bottom side turret. Jinx is so happy down there. Rocket doesn't interrupt. Oh, he's getting teleported on as well. That rocket did not interrupt someday, and now someday is coming for payback. Someday said, I saw that. That's <laughs> <Guess> not. <laughs> Unfortunately, he can't catch up. But he gets a ghost out. Okay, okay. No ghost now for Yon. Maybe that'll matter for later. Made him sweat a little bit. Just a little bit. But early on in the game, remember the tank items feel really good before the AD carries get multiple, multiple items to deal with them. So not a lot of damage there from Yon. Here's another look at how Core JJ set this up on yeah. FBI. I mean, on vision, but Core JJ Tom Kench has not been seen for quite a while. He goes real hard with it. Hits the Q to start it out. Walks in, stacks up his acquired taste, eats the Aphelios, and hand delivers the meal to Harry. Feeding him like a little baby bird right out of his mouth. Uh-oh. Pioshik's in some trouble here, trying to get away as a multi-man play from EG for the second Herald brings many of their members to the top side of the map. Summit with a good job on the repost. Pioshik escapes with his life. <laughs> Team Liquid maintains their 3,000 gold lead. And now EG with the enemy jungler forced all the way back into the base. See their opportunity to jump on the Herald. It's like every time we pan the camera over Pioshik, he's getting away from a 2v1 or a very low health scenario that he got himself into to he's begin a with. Slippery boy. He is he's happy to be 0 0 0 right now with the yes. scenarios that he's gotten himself into. Bottom side though, Dragon. They don't have their jungler, so they don't want to just continue here on the Drake. Some days down there, he's going to be the one leading the charge for the side of Evil Geniuses. They already got the first Drake. Oh, but a nice shot from Yawn guarantees Team Liquid won't give him the second. And nice dodge here uh, on the skill shots. Escaping as well, doesn't take any extra damage from FBI. It's gonna be Evil Geniuses rotating towards mid though with the Rift Herald drop and possibly another attempt on PO6 life. They take him away again, but he gets away again. This is honestly looking really good for the side of EG. Harry sticks around, I don't really know why. Anyway, they get a kill, they get the first turret. They're gonna get the crash into the second turret. Only Yawn is here. EG is gonna force this one down. This will be a massive influx of gold for the side of Evil Geniuses. That was a really good sequence of events for them. Yeah, and I think it was also a pretty big lapse in communication from Team Liquid. Pioshik just got three members chasing him out of blue buff area, so they knew those three members of Team Liquid had just taken over the blue quadrant of... of, of of the Team Liquid base, excuse me, EG. 
Poor Four? DK's dead. What? <laughs> okay, I'm hammer time. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But I have to say, that moment right there is something that people have criticized Team Liquid for for a lot of the split was lack of coordination and communication. And it was three members of EG taking over Blue Quadrant Jungle. Terry, Harry still teleports to the tower and gets dove by those three members. Tough stuff right now for Team Liquid. Losing a little bit of that lead they had built, but at least grabbing the Tier 2 in the top lane. Summit accomplished that while everybody from EG was doing the same thing mid. Now, Harry is the one to rotate up top, clear out this massive minion wave. More and more money onto the rise. Get this guy closer to that end game powerhouse stake that he becomes. Rod of Age is halfway charged. Tier almost all the way there, too. And Harry is carrying a lot of the gold right now, carrying a lot of the carry potential for Team Liquid. So if they can get him some more solo lane experience, he's pushing out on top side. Summit is getting shadowed by Pioshik. So this is actually going to be a 2v3 with Aphelios coming from yeah, base. That's the big thing. The Aphelios coming Scramble. down skews the numbers. Vulcan's your first target here. They want to go after the Soraka. Pioshik waits and jumps in over the wall. They go, they want to chase him down and they get him. But now Pioshik might finally die for it. Inspired is down to 300 HP, but he survives. Super Mega Death Rocket takes him out. And Team Liquid get a two for one. That's a very beneficial scramble for Team Liquid. Nice little move here. I don't know, Vulcan's so far into the rest of them. Oh! Jojo gets munched, spit back out of the Flame Chompers. I said he had to stop getting caught, but he can't do it. However, Summit may just die to someday's entrance into the fight, but he gets the heal. The vital was vital to his survival, and it's a double kill back over to TL. TL's gonna stand strong, and they're gonna finish off this turret too. Just melt it down. Yawn Jinx is getting quite fed as well, Flowers. That could become a problem for the evil geniuses who know very well what a Fed Jinx player can do, especially around Baron time. Man, oh man, 5,000 gold up for Team Liquid at 19 minutes. They are only one kill ahead, but man, they are building this lead. Let's take another look at how this chaotic sequence started. Yeah, Vulcan runs head first here into the, in between both of them. He, he runs into a own sandwich mode here. Pioshik's like, great, I'll kick you right over to my boy Summit, follow your flash. And in the two, what ended up as 2v4 eventually, they actually got the first kill for Team Liquid and set up the second for Yawn with a nice little snipe here down onto Gragas. So Team Liquid, out of a numbers disadvantage, were able to get the two kills benefit for JJ. As you said, beautiful Tom Kench delivery once again. And JoJo getting caught there, someday swooping in, thinking maybe he can finish Summit, but he can't quite do it because of the healing on the Vital Man. Team Liquid, loving the state of the game right now, but what do they need to do next? And look at these items for Team Liquid. Two core for, for three carries right now with Fiora, Rise, and Jinx. This is massive, massive power spike for Team Liquid. So you ask, what do they need to do now? They need to force fights on okay. objectives immediately. You're there speaking are, the language. Dragon is coming up. Take Overtake that right now. Push out topside. Rise has teleport. And Realm Warp will be up very quickly. Harry is going to be a menace right now. No one could solo answer him. So you force on that side. You force them to respond. Once they respond to block here, then you take over Dragon. You take over mid lane first here, actually, with the siege from Yawn. Jinx, I love trying to use low health turrets as the initiation for your team fight here. Right. A little bit of surprise bonus, but it looks like due to the response of Evil Geniuses, five members trying to stop the mid push, it's a double split for Team Liquid, and they get both solo laners really deep up to these inhibitor turrets. Jojo walks up going after Harry. He knows he has backup coming in in terms of inspired Gragas. Harry with the flash out, but it's a little bit late. Jojo's still trying to take him down. Harry can't make it a one for one. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Summit has broken turret. into the base of EG. Tier three turret gone before they even need Baron to do it is a really good sign here for Team Liquid. And with the pressure in the enemy base, the two men required for the kill on the rise, now Pioshik and Yawn can be left to take the drink. This is why I love split push flowers. We don't see it as often anymore with so much emphasis on these objectives that have been added to the map and the frequency with which objectives uh, come up. But Team Liquid, even with one member getting picked off because Summit is also super fed and has the Ravenous, he's able to take down bottom side inhibitor turret while Harry dies on the top side with his heavy push. And they still got the mid turret 
that was up there for Yawn as well. So definitely still net positive for Team Liquid, even giving up one kill. The benefits of pushing all three lanes at once. Here's Here. another look at him getting yep. picked off, yeah. But we pretty much saw this. So you know the answer. It's inspired, body slam flash in. Harry then tries to flash to be able to go for a trade kill. I think it's fine. You know, some people want you to save flash there. I think it's fine too. Ooh, that's what we wanted to see in this replay. Was inspired with the true support gameplay there. On Graga slides in to block the block the shot for Mr. President. Yeah, buddy. Six to six in kills, but a 6,000 gold lead for TL. Someday running up to Summit there, but Summit's pretty much unconcerned, man. He's got Sunderer. He's got Ravenous Hydra. Hmm, He's doing pretty good, ones. but he is in a 1v2 now, trying to get those vitals, trying to get the fight that he needs. Someday goes all out. Summit goes back in, wants to kill on JoJo, but he's not going to get it. Summit taken down. Super Mega Death Rocket flies in, but it will not find the kill this time. This is a very good pick for Evil Geniuses because they didn't give up too much. There's not a lot that Team Liquid, well, a face check maybe. Core JJ jumps in. They were hoping that EG was too audacious in the way they tried to enter towards the bear and thinking that Team Liquid was just rushing it down. But Ghost EG Rick, doesn't give them the chance. Ghostrick possibility of a flank with a big kick here. All right, he's not going to go for it. They don't have the numbers. Summit's still dead. He needs to teleport in 10, 10 seconds from now for the Unleashed Teleport. And Fioshik is still sneaking his way around. Man, Core JJ is just fearless. Oh, big. Where is he? Let's see it. Where's he gone? He's right there. <laughs> He's a wolf. Oh, but Inspired found him over the wall. They silenced him up. Fioshik is dead. It's the Soraka silence that prevents him from doing anything there. Oh, man. That was a fun little game of hide and seek. Oh, Core JJ with a clutch save on Yon as he flies through the air. So, Fioshik was try trying to play some Metal Gear Solid buy time for Summit's teleport to come up and then have some crazy kick surprise play, but he ends up just being an early respawn of Wolf Camp. It looks a little different. It's a new skin, but, and it also pays more actually with the collection here for Evil Geniuses. Well, Summit's trying to get back in position in bottom lane. Remember, the inhibitor is exposed down here. Summit very strong in the side lane situation with the two lifesteal type of items. Technically, Divine Sunver doesn't have lifesteal on it, but every proc, you're stealing some of that HP from Champion, so I still count it. You're going to see Someday shoving up the top side. He has his Bramble Vest still to try to help deal with the Fiora, Sunfire Cape, and Iceborne Gauntlet. He's got a lot of armor, Kobe, but no MR whatsoever. So if Harry ever gets to fire onto the Cassante, he can melt through. Definitely some scary possibilities there. I think right now Team Liquid need to avoid combat until Yon can get Infinity Edge completed on Jinx. This Jinx is actually quite close. Oh, there it is. There it is. Wow, they did not have to delay for long. Yon is so fed. Now they want to get this Jinx into combat ASAP. Hex Gates will allow that. Hex Gates even closer to Baron much more quickly. Fioshek looking once again. Wants to see if he can find FBI. Flash into the kick as FBI's in trouble. Core JJ goes for the Abyssal Voyage, but he gets silenced before he can find it. FBI's still low. Pioshik chases Vulcan out. FBI barely kept alive. Top laner's ready to join in now as Core JJ is going to be focused and killed down first with Harry going next. Team Liquid tried, but then they died. It's Evil Geniuses 5v3. Oh, Flowers, they wanted it so bad. Yon, Yon is just so fed right now in the Jinx, they wanted the fight, but they flubbed the engage. Pioshik misses good. the minion with the Q, so then he just forces it anyways. Goes in, gets the kick back. Oh, never mind, Yon. FBI is down to 300 HP. Of course, they have Soraka. It's not going to stay that way for long. Vulcan will spam heals on their AD carry. Team Liquid now has to deal with the barren attempt of evil geniuses. Inspired does not have a cast, but he has his flash. He wants to go on Yon, but the body slam doesn't get far enough. JoJo's looking for the Jinx now. Wants the AD carry. Someday's right behind him, and they're going to find it, as Pioshik won't be able to pick Vulcan off either. Summit still looking for maybe something, but there's not a lot to get. They're going to trade Yawn for stopping the EG Baron. Team Liquid's 6,000 gold lead has melted down below 3k. Summit now being chased by Sunday. He's not scared of this guy in a 1v1, but if Sunday can lock him down, he won't. That would have been the scary part. Pioshik, nope, 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 nope. He's, he's, his mind's telling him no, and his body's saying, yeah, bro, listen to him. Yeah, a couple of big fumbles here for Team Liquid. Chunking down this gold lead, and he gets ulted in. 
Yoshi, what in the hell was that? This man, he has had some crazy stuff going on in the last five, ten minutes here. Yoshik, my wayward son, he is lost. <laughs> Do not carry on. Whatever you're doing right now, <laughs> stop carrying on with that. Do what you were doing earlier. <laughs> All right. Well, they still got the dragon out of it, but it might cost them the Baron with no smite available. Ooh, look at this. Teleport to try and answer the split push, too. Are they going to go cut him off? They Super pick up Baron. Death Rocket attempted steal. EG is going to get Baron here. Down to a 1,000 gold lead for Team Liquid. The game has officially been thrown. Team Liquid struggling here for the last five minutes. They're trying to salvage a mid push out of it and get a tower. They do get the tower, which excites Yawn, but that's just going to be a, a little bit of gold in exchange. And Team Liquid, they are going to have to refocus quickly and focus on the Dragon Soul Flowers. That's what can still bring this right back for them. They still have a very powerful Jinx. Yes, Aphelios got some more money, you know, with the extra Baron as well. Evil Genius is kind of building out their armory here with three items in Transformed Muramana, Jojo, Jace ready to play, but Team Liquid still have a very, very strong three item core Jinx to fight around. If they could just set up their battle lines without all this weird walking around through Fog of War stuff and forcing fights while the rest of your team is not quite in position yet. Team Liquid need to take a breath. And I really want to compliment Jojo on the other side because I said at the beginning of the game, I was frustrated with the amount of times he's been getting caught this split. He got caught at level one. He got caught again in the bottom lane, but he hasn't died since. And he's currently tied with Inspired at 75% kill participation in this game. His Jace has got his head on straight now. So I'm kind of looking at him to land some of these big shock blasts. They're very effective on, you know, Everybody, any of the three middle champions on the right side of your screen there, the Lee Sin, the Rise, the Jinx, they can all be chunked out by that. Yawn does not have a Bloodthirster build, so it's harder for him to vamp that back up quickly. I wonder, this exposed inhibitor could get a sneak attack on it. Summit on the weak side up here. EG are making a play for Summit, while Team Liquid are making a play for the inhibitor. Yeah. They, they snuck all the way through. Evil Genius has just rushed Surprise! for it. EG wants to get back. Team Liquid needs a little more damage. Yon gets one last rocket, and now that gets him excited, so he's able to create the distance. Core JJ's here on the front line. Some days at half HP because he went all out. Team Liquid now falling back even further as EG send all five men to stop them. The teleport, there's only one available on JoJo if they want to try to find some sort of a cut-off angle, but there's not a lot of places to run for it. Pioshik. I was, I was about to say some stuff. I was about to say some stuff. I don't have to say it now. Pioshik gets away. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he lives this life every day, Flowers. This is nothing new. Easy little slide out there. No problem on this salt. EG, though, they got caught sleeping right there. Yeah. Love the call from Team Liquid, Core JJ. They walk their way through this red quadrant of the jungle. They sneak all the way through to this exposed inhibitor. Objective acquired. Good job by Team Liquid refocusing and getting a nice objective while the enemy team had Baron. That's with Baron-empowered recalls, and they just barely snuck out enough damage. Yawn sticking around for the last explosive shot onto the inhibitor. Meanwhile, Summit then got to push back out on topside. Team Liquid balancing back out. Someday not able to stop Summit from getting away there with the Blast Cone. 90 seconds till that Drake Soul that you were talking about, buddy. Hextech Soul. That is a big deal. Team Liquid really want to secure this. I don't want to see them waste big cooldowns. I don't want to see them waste flashes before this Drake fight. Yeah, and they should be able to pull some really good setup by their powerful split pushing. Personally, I like trailing split push plays, which is the play where you have Fiora split push top, but you also have Rise trail behind the Fiora and you have your double unleashed teleport. So that that way you can win the top side fight as well as being able to answer on the other side of the map. And you don't have to split bottom because you right. already took that inhibitor. But they do the traditional one through one instead of the trailing split push here to try and keep Evil Geniuses completely boxed in. See, see this bottom side just gets pushed out by super minions anyways. Yeah, you don't have to be there. FBI can clear those away pretty effortlessly thanks to the power of Infernum's AoE. 30 seconds. Oh, they interrupt Core JJ's back. That could be absolutely monstrous. He's dead for 12 seconds past the dragon spawn point. Wow. That's very, very damaging for Team Liquid's chances of being able to set this up right. Jojo walking through the jungle and just finds a 
finds a lazy Tom Kent. Nice pick, but Team Liquid will be kicking themselves for that one. With Core JJ dead, they still have their split push open though. Fiora, top side. Summit is really, really powerful while isolated, has the hole breaker. Late game Fiora with the Ravenous, annihilating the minion wave. He pushes it in. He's been circled in on there, going for the pick on him though. Percent HP true damage does not care about how many tank items Someday has built. Summit can just walk away from this one. Someday went all out. But now, what's this Drake situation gonna look like? Pioshik nearly killed. 400 HP left in the Lee Sin. Oh, oh nice shot from FBI. And Pioshik's unfortunate decisions continue to hamstring Team Liquid. Australian sniper, FBI, takes him down. They get the dragon, but look at the mini-map flowers. Split push, still getting paid here. Mid inhibitor exposed, mid inhibitor down. Core JJ might be down again too. Vulcan is getting jumped on by Yon, but Yon, you just can't target the support with FBI in your face like that. Summit's back at the base. Harry's doing the same thing, trying to help him. Team Liquid is scattered all over the place. Summit's still looking to take down the enemy, Cassante. Someday gets out. Now JoJo's having to use stasis. Here comes a redemption. JoJo right back into it. Summit on the chase, but he won't be able to find the kill just yet. Harry goes for it, he finds the kill. Team Liquid trying to fight it. A beautiful repose coming out of Summit. And now he's trying to deal with Inspire. He wants to go back in for another hit, but he can't quite get that either. FBI putting him off the map. Summit's on the run. Whoa! Team Liquid demolished the base with their split push, but evil geniuses will collect their heads for it. They chopped down on the gold lead, but Team Liquid, three inhibitors down flowers. You are basically pinned inside your base. Team Liquid, they may be out of playoffs, but they're not gonna let this one go. They're gonna go to Baron. You have three inhibitors down for evil geniuses. You have to defend. Bruh, what just happened in the last two minutes? This is why I love split push gaming flowers and it has been taken from us in so many games with all the focus on team fighting, but they're actually coming for a little bit of a contest from evil geniuses side. Outnumbered and outgunned. Evil Geniuses are still here, inspired going for the miracle. Not gonna happen today. No water into wine, as Yawn and Team Liquid can secure themselves the Baron. Now, you've got Baron. You've got three inhibs down. <laughs> Make it two. That bottom one just respawned as I'm speaking. And Team Liquid grouped up as four here in the mid lane. Harry's still pretty far away. He cannot Realm Warp all the way down here. He does not have a teleport either. So if you're Team Liquid, you gotta make sure you don't get caught before the Rise can join up. Hex Gates are gonna make it a little faster for him to get in range. And Summit wants to apply Split Pressure here on the bottom lane, respawned in him. Yeah, great thing with, uh, with those inhibitors being down at the same time for a brief second was that they got to double spawn on the other wave. And so now they can just move in with the Top and mid still down. Baron buff up those super minions and lay waste to this base. Team Liquid, time is in their favor. They just have to keep Evil Geniuses pinned down. FBI trying to clear up the waves though and is actually doing a very good job with the Infernum. Someday versus Summit here in the bottom side. Someday goes all out. Summit is silenced. The repost just in time to keep him alive. Core JJ with the immediate evac. They keep Fiora alive by a miracle. But now Pioshik has oh. to try to get out. Cyrilda's grudge slows him down. But the ward hop, the safeguard, gets him all the way back out of the base. Team Liquid, <laughs> everybody is playing this game on the edge of the edge. I love it. Core JJ, Tom Kench finds Summit, saves his life. They did get some damage onto the Nexus turrets, but they weren't able to take one. Pioshik was trying to take that top one by himself, was unable to finish it off. They don't get the inhibitor though. They're returning for that goal. Remember, there is no flash on Inspired Scragus. That's the big engage mechanism, really the only engage mechanism for the side of EG. Jojo nearly killed off by Harry's Rise. There's your Moonlight Vigil. Yawn eats the auto attack, enchanted there by FBI, but nothing more. FBI and Vulcan doing whatever they can to try to defend this. Yon's the one again. who wants to get firing time on the inhib, but he's got to be careful. You got to respect the Gragas up in the top side. Harry and Summit also trying to do what they can. There, they finally get the Nexus turret. Harry's getting focused down. They'll kill him before he can get anybody back. And now Team Liquid. Oh, oh God, that God. is huge. Team Liquid's going to get the hell out of town. They do not want to get aced here as evil geniuses will still continue to hold on. FBI, open up, Yon. That was one hell of a Gale Force, FBI. Flash Gale Force kills the enemy Jinx. This is the opportunity EG need. 
Pioshik thinking about trying to help Summit there, but recognizing there's no way to do it. Oh. Summit's just got to keep running away, using the lunge, spamming that out. There is a super minion back in the base that's going to do a little bit of damage here to the remaining Nexus turret, but Inspired and Vulcan will deal with that. There is less than 45 seconds on yet another Drake, and that's where I'm expecting Team Liquid to head once those carries are alive. Yeah, EG, they really needed to try and catch some stragglers there. You could tell if they were able to get any other pick trying to get one more delayed death timer, then maybe they'd be able to deal with this. But since Team Liquid took down the inhibitor, three inhibitors down at once again at the same time will double spawn those super minions. They buff each other up. It's so much pressure to deal with. EG, maybe they, they throw some Hail Mary towards this dragon to try and steal it, but you don't have a lot of time to work with. Because yep. look, right now, top lane, double stack supers, those things push so quickly, and guess what? You only have one Nexus turret left. It so. looks like it's a no contest from EG on this Drake. They finally have to give it up. The Hex Soul goes over to Team Liquid, who now doesn't really even have a gold lead. At 37 minutes into the game, plus 900 is ignorable. But they have such a pressure lead with inhibitors down, base open, and the Hex Soul. Every time they can get some poke, Ooh. Oh, they want Jojo, the Realm Lord, the Rune Prison, the first! They get his Guardian Angel. They need to make sure they finish the kill on him. They mistime the zap. Jojo's low, gonna be knocked back into the team, probably traded for Pioshik. A Guardian Angel on him now as well. Yon wants to kite back. Oh, 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 Yon, he's no it's fire nearly gets him. Yon oh, 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 keeps kiting, Summit keeps chasing. He finally gets him. Team Liquid is running, but remember that Summit is back in the base. Someday wants to go stop him, as Harry's the last remaining man here in the top side. Summit, still looking to tear these inhibitors apart. He got the top one, he got the middle one, and we're right back to where we damn started. Can they trap him? He has no ghost. He's Fiora, though. He's too mobile. They have to deal with the minions. Evil geniuses, they kept the kills. They stall the team fight. They buy more time, but their inhibitors have been re-killed. This game is a game. Yeehaw! This is LCS, baby! Last day of the spring split. Team Liquid have been eliminated, so all the pressure lifted from their shoulders. They say, you know what? Let's run through split push. Try and just split push as hard as you possibly can, trading our lives for objectives, our lives for buildings. Well, importantly, Knocking down those inhibitors does give TL a very good situation for this Baron that's spawning in under 45 seconds. If they can secure that Baron, then who knows what happens? Yeah, then what? <laughs> I, I, I don't really know. I mean, at this point, you can't really predict anything because the game has gone mad. But you know what? I'm excited to see however this one ends. I, I still think it is such a big advantage for Team Liquid to constantly have three inhibitors killed. So when these neutral objectives come up, like you're talking about the Baron, they should be able to have an advantageous, at least setup. If if EG are crazy enough to, to rush there and try and try and actually fight them that far away from base, then it's going to cost you a lot. The added wrinkle is that this map is even more fun because of hex gates, so you yeah. can actually travel even Whoa. quicker. There it is. Summit has used his teleport to find a position in the bottom lane. He wants to keep split pushing, but remember that summoner spell is a huge thing to not have with the current state of the game being a macro dance. That means Team Liquid has to make use of the pressure that he's drawing down there, and that's exactly what they'll do. It's a free Baron for TL. Baron up split push, Flowers. You thought those minions were strong before with oh all the supers? Boy. Now they've got Baron empowered push. All you have to do for Team Liquid now is avoid the snap engage from Evil Geniuses. Buff up your super minions. Just literally stand outside this Nexus turret. Keep your distance, deny the engage from EG, and you will win the War of Attrition. Well, remember, that bottom lane inhib is also going to respawn very quickly. About 30 seconds left on that. Someday, jumping forward finds a oh. knockback onto Yon, but Core is staying right next to the Jinx. They want to make sure that Yon can't be engaged on. Harry takes a hex gate out. He's going to go bottom and get that wave pushing up as well. Team Liquid trying to play this a little bit slower than we've seen yes. their previous attempts in the EG base. Good, good. That's what I'm talking about. Play it slower. Time is in your advantage. War of Attrition here. Work it in. Get the next inhibitor kill. Harry gets the minions up. Pioshik is with him. EG rotate to try and defend. Slowly but surely. From Yon's rockets, the range of They're the Jinx it. is going to come into play here. FBI with purple and blue. Core JJ keeping Yon safe. 
Bottom lane inhibitor cracked again. Nexus turret. Oh my god, Vulcan nearly died. They get the ulti out of the Soraka. That's a pretty big resource. Redemption gonna be called down next. Rocket Poke continues coming out. Let's see if they can find the engage they're looking for. EG huddling up together. The Nexus turret nearly dead. Yawn the same. One more hit on that Nexus turret is gonna take it out, but they can't quite find it. It's fired here in the stasis. The Chompers are on. The Gragas is down. EG 4v5 as TL continues pushing. Pioshik still looking for the chance. He already used his ulti, so he's gotta be careful. Now here on the front, Someday's in trouble. Jojo goes after Harry, but Team Liquid goes in. Yawn's ready to fight. Someday wants to chase him, but he can't quite do it. Someday gets the kill. It's over. It's done. Team Liquid take the game. TL, after getting eliminated from playoffs, they deliver us one of the most exciting games we have had in quite a while. Flowers, split push, bring around the rosy, hide and seek, all contained in this single game. EG has lost three games in a row here in Super Week. And with this loss, we are now guaranteed a minimum of three tiebreakers. Oh, it's gonna be fun. We got fireworks, explosions lined up for the LCS. What an absolutely crazy game. Team Liquid at one point commanding a 6,000 early gold lead, but it was EG who were able to find some punishes. It was EG who caught Pioshik having fun and just smacked them down a couple of times. They slowed down this war machine of Team Liquid. They stole away that first bear and they were able to grab that for themselves. But ultimately, the leads that Liquid built around the Drakes in the early game, around the pressure that Summit had in the sides, taking inhibitors, even when Liquid were losing fights, they were getting objectives. They were still, quote unquote, winning out, even though they had a lot of dead bodies piling up after a while. Fiora Rise Split Push. Very fun to watch. Great stuff here delivered. Wowie. And now we get some tiebreakers. Guaranteed. Chaos, some tiebreakers. Three. Guaranteed three. <laughs> What's going on, man? This is this is a crazy, crazy this is, day. This is League of Legends, my friends. This is League of Legends, my friends. Here's a look at the standings in this lovely game we call League of Legends. Cloud9 and FlyQuest tied. Guaranteed tiebreaker with them. EG and CLG, they're also tied. That means a guaranteed tiebreaker between them. 100 Thieves and Golden Guardians, we're still gonna have to wait and see what happens with these two. If they both win, well, then it's four-way tiebreaker third through sixth. If they both lose, well, then they're gonna have a tiebreaker for fifth or sixth anyway. And if one of them wins and one of them loses, then it's still a three-way tie at third because we'll have three teams at 10 wins. This is, if we're following the flow chart, the most chaotic outcomes that we could have throughout the day. Cloud9 lost, guaranteeing CLG got to 10 wins for tiebreaker. FlyQuest won, guaranteeing, okay, well now they're gonna tiebreak Cloud9. Team Liquid wins, guaranteeing, oh boy, EG didn't make it to 11, no locked third place. It just gets crazier. And if you like crazy stuff in League of Legends, a reminder, we are officially live with tickets for the LCS Spring Final in Raleigh, North Carolina on April 8th and April 9th. Last year, we finally got to bring road shows back and they were bad ass. We hope to keep it up here this year and you can head to Ticketmaster.com right now to claim your spot and we hope to see you all there at the finals. I'm done for the day. Kobe's sticking around for a live this or that, but before we get there, it's this week's Player of the Week interview. Check it out. Welcome to the MasterCard Player of the Week interview. I am joined by MNS. Congratulations. You didn't do the, the kind of body scan for Player of the Week. So what they did is they stole a blabber statue and, yeah. ta and taped your face on it. So hopefully we'll be able to get you in. Well, congratulations. Yeah. You've done really well since coming into uh, LCS. One thing I did want to start with is what it's been like to be on C9 specifically um, and what their team environment has been like. There are so many things, so it's hard to say, honest, honestly. So, okay, first, environment. For me, C9 environment means like coaching staff and teammates and like my sleep schedule and eating workout yeah there are so many things and not only me like we are trying to make this little well 
at first, I really wanted to make my body perfectly, like a really good condition mm -hmm. and really good sleep well, really good attitude, really good effort about my playing. So those are things are going pretty well. Well, I watched your stream this morning and, and I saw that you're eating healthy <laughs> while pulling up pictures of fast food. Why, why are you torturing yourself like this? Why are you guys so <laughs> watching my stream? <laughs> it was a great stream. You're a fun streamer. But more people should check out your stream. It's a good time. Uh, so <laughs> uh, first, I really want to lose my weight. The second thing is I have so many wannabe. Uh, one of my wannabe is Kobe Bryant. Okay. Yeah, and I saw he always doing perfectly about his job, like even eating and sleep schedule. So I want to try to this because this year I said this, my goal is really huge, like winning LCS, getting LCS or pro, even I started split harp mm -hmm. and like doing really well in MSI and blah, 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 those of things. So if I can control my environment, that's just what can I control? Mm -hmm. That's a really good attitude. And yeah. it sounds like C9 is a really good org to, to help out with that. But taste, really bad. <laughs> we, need to, we need to find you some better, better healthy food options <laughs> that maybe taste better, hopefully. Uh, I, I've tried it, I know it's really hard. I've also heard that you like animals. Yeah. A lot, and yeah. Your parents are vets. If you could get C9 to get an animal, what would it be? Mm, the first, whatever animal, I like it. But uh, first, uh, I like big dog, like uh, golden little liver mm -hmm. or like, you know, shoot. Uh, well, what is the thing? Like, uh, just, just big dog because when the chilling, just, you know, hug. And uh, I can't <laughs> say my word, but if you guys watching my stream, you guys know what I say. All right, well, C9, this man's been doing really well. C get him a big dog. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Yeah. All the best. You've been performing amazingly well. And that'll do it for this week's MasterCard Player of the Week interview. Thank you.